Hi everyone. Welcome to our live. If you're watching the replay, hit hashtag replay. We are with Jessica from Maryland tonight. So we'll wait for some people to hop on before we get going. We were just kind of talking before we went live and all that fun stuff. So, but I forgot to ask, um, what are you drinking? I think I saw a truly. Oh, so these are, I okay. So TikTok made me buy it. They're the truly uh, fruit punch flavors. Oh, these, I think they're new. No. So this one's pretty good. This one's tropical punch, but they come in fruit punch, berry punch, tropical, and citrus. And the citrus one's like, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not a really citrus cool. person either. Yeah, like, I, I like the berry one and the tropical one I think are my favorites. So. Yeah, we got some wine for our wedding that was on top of the fridge. And I think this is rosé. So, oh, again, this camera's backwards. So I had it. Like, oh, no, I keep open. moving the wrong. <laughs> I like the, so the, my friend got me this for, um, I think it was like a wedding gift or, or bride bridal gift or some kind. But I, this is my favorite wine glass. Look at this. That's pretty. It's like all freaking sparkly. I love it. I love Say it. hi when you're on so we know you're on. I see that there are two viewers. Hey, Nikki. We are just talking about how we missed you. <laughs> so if you don't know, Jessica and Nikki are part of our pro staff team. And we all got together, um, well, actually separate times. So Nikki came to Wisconsin and fished with some pro staffers. And then Jessica came down to Florida with some of us. So this is kind of fun. We got um, Becky, too, on. So hello, ladies. Let us know what you're drinking. Uh, <laughs> Jessica's got a Truly. I got some wine. Some I might have had a glass before. <laughs> it came down. This may be my second. It's all good. I like the way you think. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be talking about um, rockfish tonight. Nikki's got her ultra ultra lime with a lime. I should. Oh, that's the ultra they make, lime. Don't they make? I think they make ultra limes now too. Yeah, I think she had those when we uh, we were fishing together in Carolina Beach, those Mick Ultra limes. Yeah, she definitely left some at our house. Um, and then Jake ended up, I think, drinking them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've had any yet. But Well, we have a few people on. We may just wait for a few more to hop on before sure. we get started. But um, Jessica, I know most people that are watching know, know where you're from and stuff, but for people that are watching the replay, do you want to just give us a little background about where you're from um, and anything else, like your day job and how you got into fishing and all that fun jazz? Sure. So I'm Jessica. Uh, I live in Maryland. I'm in, I guess, what most people would call Central Maryland. Um, so I'm located towards the top of the Chesapeake Bay, off the, you know, where the tributaries kind of poke up there. Uh, I am a corporate paralegal for a major insurance company. Um, I live with my husband. Uh, Monday was our seven-year anniversary, by the way. And look at the look at the wedding pic in the background. Yep, yes, there's my little wedding pic in the background. Oh, oh, oh that way. <laughs> um, uh, we have a four-year-old son. He'll be five in September. His name is Henry. Uh, we have a blue tick coon hound named Tucker. I have a cat under the table. His name is Wallace. We have a flock of 26 chickens out back. Uh, we also have six turkeys. And then we have 30 uh, meat chickens that will end up in the freezer here soon. Um, when do you butcher those? Uh, like they I think they need a few more weeks yet. But they, they mature very, very fast. So we oh, got those, okay. those mid-April. So they'll be ready um, probably by mid or earlier mid June. Yeah, so oh, okay. That's that's I've never done that. So I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Uh, that's a whole nother. <laughs> that's episode. a whole other <laughs> podcast. Yeah, oh gosh, Nikki knows I could go on and on and on about chickens and turkeys and everything. Yeah. Um, well, I for as far as fishing, uh, I used to go fishing with my mom all the time, and we just did uh, just the piers around the rivers around uh, the county where we live in. And just good old fashioned night crawlers and lightweight spinning rods. Uh, and then it wasn't until several years ago, almost 10 years ago, 
that my husband took me offshore fishing. And you've heard this story a couple of times, yeah, but uh, my I husband took it. me offshore fishing for my first time several years ago. And ever since then, it's just, it's an addiction. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. And I, I've told my husband that he doesn't ever have to buy me Christmas presents or birthday <laughs> presents or anniversary gifts or Valentine's gifts. You just have to take me fishing. Yeah. He doesn't get to go offshore by himself anymore. He has mm-hmm. to take it every time. That's how I am with Jake. It's the same thing. Like he'll, him and my dad will talk about going fishing. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, Where you know, like, what are we going? <laughs> yeah, I can fish offshore, but that's not going on a boat, you know? Right. Well, I hear you. And that's just been, I mean, I've said this story too. I mean, I didn't really get into fishing until I met Jake and it wasn't until a few years after that. And it's the same thing. It's like, it's addicting. The more and more I fish, the more and more. The I get more addicted. you want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, I think being, you know, being a part of casting Queens and like, especially in our VIP mm-hmm. group, like seeing all these women across the country and like even in other countries and these fish that they catch that we don't have here or not yeah. on our coast or in other countries. Like I started, I have a bucket list now. I wrote, I have a whole list yeah. in my, my planner of all these fish that I want to catch in these places I want to go. So I think we need to create a, like an app that will help us track our bucket list for fish. Yes. Because yes. We need like a like, Tinder. I can't like even remember. App. And then where am I supposed to keep it all? And it's like, well, I want to do that too. Like, let's go. Like, let me figure out right. how to do that. Or, yeah. Yeah. I, we're, I'm going uh, bow fishing tomorrow from the first time. Ever. Oh, exciting. I'm doing that in July. So like just the new experiences is, is awesome. And I, you know, starting casting queens, I didn't know it was going to be what it is and just seeing everyone fish. And right. I think it's awesome. And even just like sitting here talking to you and other people about fishing others. Spe- <laughs> Every podcast or I keep saying podcast, but interview, I seriously struggle with this word species. Species. I, yeah. That can be a tricky one. When you're on your second rose, I cannot I say it for the life of me. Like I need like a different word or something. <laughs> <laughs> So you started, so you're, um, so you started fishing with your mom, which is super cool. What did you yeah. guys fish for? Um, it, I think at that age, it was really whatever we can get was exciting. Okay. Um, and we, I mean, we would catch like little, su- I mean, I don't know what you guys call them out there, but we call them sunnies or bluegills. Yeah. We'd get yep. uh, yellow perch, white perch, mm-hmm. um, some little catfish here and there. And then I'd always be the one to pull up an eel this big slimy. Have you pulled one of those up? It's awful. No. no oh gosh. Yeah. They 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 like do this. Oh, thing. it's like a snake fish. Oh, and you're, you're yeah, it's here. yeah, it's, and they're slimy. And then once you get that slime on your fishing line, like you have to cut the line off, and it's a big mess. Yeah. But uh, and that was it was more just for fun. It really wasn't yeah. you know for food. Um, so it was just to get out there and, and have some fun with it. But right. then one, once I started going offshore fishing and just the size and the amount of fish that mm-hmm. we catch is what really draws me. I mean, I, I'm a sucker for the big ones. I love to reel in mm-hmm. the big fish. So, yeah. and I you think, can do it too. I mean, that's all water fishing. That's yeah, hard. It, it can be and tough. Just, we have, we have videos of you just reeling. <laughs> cranking and cranking and cranking. Your <laughs> arms are on fire. Yeah. And just crank it. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely had to help me a few times. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, it, it's a, that. it's a whole new, it's a whole nother animal out there. I mean, it's a whole nother experience, you know, some of the, I mean, and you pull up these fit, you like, you fight this fish that you pulled up from a few hundred feet deep and you're like, this thing has to be huge. And you get and it up. Like and this it's like, big. Not really that big. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, there's a lot of tough fighting fish out there. <laughs> well, tell us. So people that are watching, um, hello. Thanks for saying hi to everyone. We got Cassie, Rebecca, Karen, Marley. Um, I'm sure there's some others on too. So say hi when you're on just so we can give you a shout out. Um, but rock bass or rock fish. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it's just a Maryland thing that we call them rockfish. So that's why I try to specify and I say Maryland rockfish because for everyone else that means striped bass. Um, Mm -hmm. like rockfish can, it encompasses a lot of species, like in different parts of the country, in different areas in the world, like other uh, places will call rock, any type of fish that lives and hangs out in rocky areas underneath the water, hides in those little nooks and crannies, they'll call those rockfish. Uh, but Mm -hmm. in Maryland, it specifically means striped bass. Yeah. 
And in fact, it's our it's our state fish in Maryland. So I think that's why it's you know part of the hype about it. I mean, it's a sport fish. It's a good fighting fish. I think that's why people like like catching them so mm -hmm. much. Um, I know years and years ago, like the population was like really really healthy, and then the sport really caught on, and mm -hmm. the population was really overfished. And there was a moratorium for years. I think it was like back in the '80s, and you couldn't catch them at all. They were completely locked down. Um, but now they've opened back up and there's really tight regulations on rockfish in Maryland. Yeah. So um, what are like some of the regulate, like, is there a, is it amount of how many you keep or is it like specific to length or times it's, of year? It's, it's everything. It's throughout the year. There are different, um, they're, they're tighter on certain things throughout the year. So I think in like January, I think it's only catch and release everywhere. Um mm -hmm. I think that's like January through February, Ooh, excuse me. Um, but uh, trophy season starts May 1st. Usually it's May 1st every year, but I think they review it and adjust it as needed. And there's uh, two weeks of trophy season and everything has to be 35 inches or bigger. Uh, so there, I mean, there's some pretty monster fish. Yeah, you know, see, we, they must uh, get pretty big then. Yeah, we we did a charter uh, opening weekend. It was the second. In fact, I did the the Casting Queens mm -hmm. takeover that day. And yeah. Um, we only had one fish that day, um, but our you know fellow pro staffer Becky, her son, uh, reeled in our fish that day. It was his first rockfish too, uh, and it was a big forty-five incher. The thing had to be like forty to fifty pounds. It was massive, and it was it was such a good fight. He was he was tiring out. We were pumping him up, and I just watching him reel in that fish. I think it really just shows why people like catching these fish so much because they can get really big and they're really fun fish to fight when you're reeling them in. How long did it so, take him to reel it in? Um, I, I think it took him at least 15, 20 minutes because it was on our long line all the way, all oh. the way back out. So mm -hmm. I'll get into how the, the spreads lay out in a minute. But uh, so after the two week trophy season, um, then I think it goes down to um, the basic regulations that it has to be a 19 inch minimum. Um, and then from there through the rest of the year, um, it's, it, op it also, it opens up for certain areas in the Chesapeake Bay and the tributaries. So the later in the season, that line up the bay goes up farther and farther and farther where you can fish for them and where you can keep them or where it's just catch and release or where it's closed off for spawning. Um, there's a moratorium in July where there's, it's completely closed, no catch and release, nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the season will go through the rest of, I think it's like August through the rest of the year into the early December. So you can mm -hmm. catch them pretty late in the year. I mean, there, there's opportunity most of the year, but that, I mean, everybody wants to go for that trophy season because they're, they're nice big fish that time of year. Is it cause so, um, when they open it up, is that because they're done spawning and stuff? Why they open yeah, I mean, it's based, that they yeah, tighten it's, it up when they're spawning. Yeah, parts of it it's based on when they spawn, and parts of it is also you know for just overfishing, you know, to prevent overfishing. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it'll be open in parts of the bay. It'll be closed in the tributaries, and then it'll open up farther and farther up as the later you go in the season. Nice, that makes sense. So, how big do they get? So, obviously the one he caught or um, Becky son caught was what you said, like 40 something. It was 25 inches. It had to be like 50 pounds. I swear. I, I don't know what the weight was on it. Maybe Becky remembers. Um, I did write down right? what the state record is uh, in yeah. 1995. It was like 67 and a half pounds <laughs> for a striped bass. <laughs> like that's a big fish. That's a really big Yeah, fish. it is. It's huge. It's like, it's almost as big as my dog. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so how, um, what's like a decent sized one? Like if you catch fish. Like um, let me see. We fished a tournament last August and we caught one. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it was about 24 inches. So I think mm -hmm. they, they have, like your average is going to be like 18, 18 to 20 some inches. Yeah. Well, okay. If you hit that 35 mark, that's when they're getting really big. Mm -hmm. So and they 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 live a long time. Like the those big ones, they can live to be like thirty years old. And they'll wow. when they when they spawn, they'll stay in the Chesapeake Bay for like three to five years, and then they go down the mouth of the bay, and then they'll migrate up and down the Atlantic coast, and then they'll get bigger out there because they're fresh and salt water. And the Chesapeake. Okay, yeah. Bay so I was going to ask that. So that's interesting. Yep. Then they're 
I, I wonder how they can be both. You know I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know. Like how, how, that'd be a question for the man upstairs. How can they be both? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the biggest one you've caught? Uh, it, it was the one that we caught in that tournament last year. It was 24 inches. So not really big. That was my first one. So it really? wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really big. We, uh, my husband really got into rockfish. I mean, he's, he used to rockfish with charters when he was younger and, um, we bought a, a 31 foot boat, like two, three, I think it's two and a half years ago, maybe almost three years ago. Um, and we take that down to the Chesapeake Bay bridge, um, mm -hmm. So that's getting down closer and closer to the mouth of the bay. And uh, we troll around there for rockfish. So he's he's caught a good bit. Not not a ton. It's kind of, it's <laughs> Maryland rock fishing can be frustrating because you, sometimes you gotta, you gotta throw out whatever you have. You gotta just try whatever you, you can do because they're, they're, I feel like they're just an elusive fish. I mean, and maybe that's why people are drawn to them so much because they're, it's tough to catch them. It could be real. I mean, we'll mark on yeah. the you know on the screen fish everywhere, and they're just not biting. Interesting. I would. It, so it's not then that you know they had that uh, not shortage, but whatever. Were they? Oh yeah, you know, the overfishing. Yeah. Yeah. So it must not be that if you're marking them. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. They're popular. It, I think it was after that moratorium back in the eighties, it was like the early two thousands. The population came back like immensely. Like it was almost overpopulated at that point. Like, and it hmm. came back full force. And I think maybe that's why people have really gotten into it too. Right. So what do you guys use then to um, fish for them? I know so you said we, you had some rigs you wanted to show us. Yeah, I have a couple rigs here. So when we fish on our boat and um, the charter that we went with a few weeks back, um, we're using all artificial stuff. So here's an example. Oh, I got to get the camera right here. So here's just, just a, a rig. Yeah. Rig. This way. So, and the, uh, the coloring is probably kind of off, but this is like a bright fluorescent yellow. Mm -hmm. And then there's a white one. Um, but we will also use um, the, uh, I think they're called sassy shads and they will be in all different color, um, like white, that like bright fluorescent yellow, there's mm -hmm. chartreuse. I've seen hot pink. I've seen ones with glitter in them. You mean, you see all different variations. Um, and this is what we use for trolling. My husband and I, we don't really use, we haven't used live bait, uh, but mm -hmm. some people will use live bait. They'll try um, the live line with spots or white perch. Um, some people will even drift eels. The eels I was talking about used to catch as a kid. Um, they'll drift with those. Uh, but for trolling, we use these lures and uh, we'll, we'll set them up on what we call umbrella rigs. So I don't know how to describe it. So it's almost like a big, um, kind of looks like two wire hangers kind of like overlap mm -hmm. like this. So it's, it's crossed. And then off of each corner, you've got a lure hanging back on there. And then sometimes okay. you'll have one in the, in the center. So you'll have five lures on one umbrella rig. Um, so is then, it like different depths then that those are yes. on? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you'll also have what they call tandems, which is just two of the lures on the back. And you want to put things out, out at kind of every depth that you can. Um, like I said before, you kind of have to throw everything out there mm -hmm. and see what you can get to bite. Um, we'll use what we call planer boards, which I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Um, I it's for when you're trolling. Yeah, so it's I I call them like the poor man's outriggers. Um, so basically, they're these boards. There's usually like three stacked boards, and they lay in the water. Um, and they'll drift them off to the sides of the boat and they'll mm -hmm. send them out 75 feet, a hundred feet, depending on how, I don't, I can't remember. I don't know if there's a regulation on how far out they're supposed to be, but I think my husband said he sends his out 75 feet and then we'll have rigs, um, like rubber banded onto a carabiner all along that, um, that line that holds the planer board out. So it takes all of your lines and spreads them out along the back of the boat. Um, when we fish, we can use, we have enough room for 14 rods, you know, mm -hmm. lines in the water at all different de depths and different, you know, rigs on the back. Um, the charter boat that we went with a couple weeks ago, we had, I think 29 lines in at one point. I think I put that oh, up. Wow. 
I think I had put that up on our stories that day. Um, and you just, you just got to put it all out there, see what happens, get as much, yeah. water, just get, get as you, much uh, stuff in the water as you can. Right. When you, um, like fish for the striped bass, do you also try to fish for other stuff too while you're at it since they are harder fish to catch or do you strictly um, like when you're going, like you're going to go for that? That's what you're doing for rock fishing. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's really nothing else in the bay. I think that's going to buy. I think we did pull up, um, you might foul hook something by accident if you have that much gear on the back. Um, <laughs> but, but it's, you know, you're, you're somewhat, you're not, it's not high speed trolling, but you're, you're trolling at a good pace. So, and rockfish, I mean, they're speedy fish, you know, they're water torpedoes. That's the way they're built. So that's what's right. going to go after what you've got in the water. So um, since you don't, <laughs> since they're harder to catch, do you eat them or is it, do you typically yes. just, no, back. rockfish, not only are they a sport fish, they are very, very good eating. They're very firm, white, flaky fish. Um, a lot of people will grill it because it will stay together, unlike other oh, fish yeah. that have a softer yeah. texture. Um, uh, I like to like broil it in like lemon and butter and good old fashioned Old Bay. It's another Maryland thing. Um, <laughs> we use that on everything in Maryland. Over? Old Bay, you got to get it on everything. I don't even know where where they sell it, it out like, in, in other states. Is it just like um, a fish mix? It's like a yeah. Fruit well, fruit Maryland, we, like I said, we put it on everything. Um, traditionally, people steam their crabs with it in Maryland because that's another big you okay. know, thing we do in the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's also it's a great seafood season. It's I would kind of compare it to almost a Cajun seasoning. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. It's hard to describe. <laughs> well, we need to look that up. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe we have delicious. to link it. If I can figure out how to link it, yeah, we'll have to um, put it in the description. So yeah. Well, if you've ever it. been in the grocery store and seen um, Utz flavored cra or their um, crab chips from Utz potato chip brand, I don't know if you guys have them out there. So that's pretty much Old Bay seasoning in there, crab seasoning. Yeah, Nikki says uh, Old Bay Cheese Puffs. Oh, the Old Bay Cheese Curls. So I brought a bag of those with us when we fished in Carolina Beach in April, and everybody was hooked. So they're basically cheese curls that have Old mm -hmm. Bay mixed in on them, and they're so good because they kind of have this. I try this Old Bay. It sounds intriguing. It's so good. It's so good. You can, you literally can put it on anything. I put it in chicken salad. I sprinkle it on top deviled eggs. I put it in... Um, like fish batter when I beer batter fish and deep fry it. You people steam their crabs with it here. You can put it in soups. You can put it in everything. It's really, really good. Um, Marley says for the Wisconsin people that she did find old bay chips at Piggly Wiggly in Wisconsin. Oh so yeah. gotta find I might have to check out the the good old Woodman's in Lacrosse. It's like a huge grocery store that has literally everything that I'm sure they probably have something like this yeah. that we're talking about. Yeah. And BZ says, send us some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to um, I'll send you some links or some pictures of, of what they are because it's just really, yeah. really good. I mean, um, I have, just, I have um, two Sorry. gallons of Old Bay seasoning in my pantry. <laughs> you should go get it. We want to see what it you looks want, like. You want me to go get one? Yeah, yeah. you should go get it. I'll be right back. <laughs> if anyone has any questions too, um, for Jess and she gets back. Definitely put them in the comments so that we can keep talking and, um, you know, if you do have any other questions for her. So, and always, as always, hop on um, and let us know when you are watching. All right, I brought the smaller container. Oh, so it is like a. Yep. That's just like a plain Jane label, too. I mean, I feel like you can't miss that. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it's manufactured in Maryland. In fact, I get free Old Bay because my husband's uh, uncle works for the spice company <laughs> that makes this. So then you should send us some. You I guys. should. I'll, I'll, I'll bag it all up and I'll send you some. Yeah. You'll love it. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably have to make sure it's legal first so you can, you know, cross state lines if they don't want to sell it, you know. <laughs> We don't want to get into trouble or nothing. Bootleg and crab seasoning. <laughs> I 
you know, something like how Wisconsin only has spotted cow. You can only have it in Wisconsin. Probably something like that. Right. Well, um, I would say but, one more way, one more way that people will eat rockfish is um, they'll make it with crab imperial on top, which is, of course, another Maryland tradition. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a crab cake, but it's more, um, it's more like saucy and not in a, in oh. a cake. Okay. So it's crab meat and a nice, like, creamy mayonnaise base, oh. and you put it on top and broil it, and it gets all nice and crispy on top. That sounds really good. Really good, yep. And it's, it's you, you can't, you have to ignore the calories on it, but it's really, really good. Well, yeah, who wants to look at calories when you're exactly. eating that kind of stuff? It's all pretty much butter, so. Yep. <laughs> Just use that as your cheat day or week yeah. or whatever. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> We don't body shame here. Everyone exactly. is fine. <laughs> Love it. Um, so I don't know if it doesn't look like anyone else has any questions. Um, if you are watching the replay, definitely. And if you do have questions, let us know. Um, Jessica will try to answer those or we'll try to direct you to the right place to get some answers on those, especially like regulations or even charters too. Um, Jess, if you want to, I know you've been on some, if you want to mm -hmm. comment those um, sure. in case someone's out in Maryland and wants to try this out. Um, yeah. You can always come fishing with us, although I can't guarantee Yeah. We're gonna catch any because they're so hard to catch. But yeah. you know what? It's just fishing. about the experience and exactly <laughs> good time. So exactly. if you're looking to catch fish, maybe don't go for a striped bass, <laughs> rockfish, Maryland rockfish. But if you're looking for a good time, hit up Jessica and her husband. Um, they'll definitely take you on their boat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if if anybody uh, does this around you, but rock fishing is such a like it's such a sport here. Um, there are people who, you know, they'll put their, their fish pictures up on Facebook and they'll mm -hmm. blur out the background or they'll like color oh, over yeah. the landscape so you can't see where they are. Like it's. Oh yeah. People do that here all the time, especially for ice fishing. That's a big one. Mm. We went ice fishing and took a picture and you could really tell what was in the background. And so I had to wait like a while before I posted them. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I guess to wait a bit. <laughs> you know, great. Well, cheers, lady. Thanks so much. Yep. Cheers. Thanks for coming and talking. And I'm so glad this worked tonight. Yeah. Uh, woo. <laughs> we're getting somewhere. So Yay. all right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. And Jessica, you have a good night. Yeah. See you soon. You soon. <laughs> yes, definitely. Bye, Bye. guys.